In this video, we take a look at a Facebook ads campaign structure for retargeting campaigns. There's actually a few different examples I will walk you through so you can understand what is the best way to set up your campaigns to maximize the impact of retargeting. One of the big benefits of running retargeting campaigns on Facebook and Instagram is the power of these campaigns because people are already familiar with your brand, so they can be quite effective. But what's important to note is that the way that you structure these campaigns are going to be crucial for the success of the performance of the campaigns. And it's mainly for two reasons. Number one, structure allows you to have a sense of control, not a sense, but actual control over your bids and your budgets, meaning that you can maximize what you're willing to pay for one audience and minimize what you're willing to pay for another audience. This example that you see here can be utilized for both e-com advertisers and lead generation advertisers, and it's quite a standard one. I have a more sophisticated version or, or two different versions I wanna show you, but this is quite standard and this is retargeting by recency. And the whole concept here is that somebody that comes to your website in the last seven days is gonna have a higher intent to purchase than someone that hasn't been on your website in the last 21 days. So they might be a 30 day visitor, but they haven't visited in the last seven days. They're not gonna have the same level of intent. And we've typically seen that there is drop offs between someone that's been to your website between seven days and then there's another drop off at 14 days. So this example here is allowing you to break these ad sets up so that you can allow the algorithm to maximize dollars against that seven day audience. Now, depending how you set up your campaigns, you might wanna test this setup with CBO and allow the algorithm to, to maximize budget based on where it's seeing results. And you might also wanna test this against a control period where you're doing uh, ad set level budgets to see if it gives you a different, um, if it gives you a difference in performance. So this is something that you definitely wanna test. Now, separate to website visitors, there's also going to be engagement retargeting options that you can do. So anybody that's watched your video to 50% or till completion, people who, who have been engaging with your organic profiles on Facebook or on Instagram, um, there's all sorts of different types of engagement retargeting. These signals tend to not be as strong because if somebody has engaged with your brand but hasn't been willing to go to the website, that typically signals a different level of intent. So that's why we would separate it. But again, this allows you to control performance and see what's working. So now I wanna show you a different approach to this. So this here is retargeting by intent. It can be tricky to define exactly what intent is, but usually in the world of digital is that we look at signals that we can rationalize that a consumer that's engaging, that's triggering these signals will tend to have a higher propensity to purchase or to convert. So the first example you see here at the top is uh, a 14 day, someone who's been to the website within 14 days and triggered the add to cart conversion standard event. So someone who added to cart, we can justify and rationalize that they have a high intent because not only have they gone to the website, they've looked at a product and they've added it to cart. And typically people only add things to carts when they're gonna buy, or if they wanna get you know, the final price because they're interested in buying a product. So that would be the highest intent that we would see here. Then from there, we could take a look at someone who's been to the website within 14 days and triggered a content view standard event. Usually you would put these on product pages. So this wouldn't be on your homepage. This wouldn't be on generic pages on your website. These, the content view standard event should be tracked and tagged. Your product pages that have all the detail information. So if they went to the product page but didn't add to cart, not quite there, but also there is an intent because they went to a product page. And then we go down into medium intent. These are people that have been to your website within 30 days, didn't add to cart, so on and so forth. Now, you might be asking yourself this question and saying, all right, if I break up all these audiences, what's even the point of advertising to anybody that has low intent? So let's take, for example, someone that went to the website within 30 days, so it's been quite some time, but they didn't even go to a product page and they didn't add anything to cart. And the reason why is because you're gonna have tactics that are gonna help you drive performance and the most efficient CPAs, they're gonna give you the best ROAS, they're gonna give you the cheapest cost per lead, but there's still opportunity out there. Now these other retargeting audiences, they're not gonna drive the same level of performance, but they're gonna give you additional volume. Just because an audience is low intent doesn't mean that they're not gonna buy or they're not interested. What you start to do is maybe you change what you're messaging towards them. Um, maybe your high intent audiences, as an example, you might wanna test 
not doing promotion like offer based messaging to them because they, they've come to your website so recently. So maybe they don't need that level of incentive, but instead you take your 20% off or your 40% off or you buy one, get one or your free consultation, whatever your incentive based messaging is. Maybe you hit that low intent audience and see if you can successfully bring those people in that way. The people who are going to convert and pay full price for your product or convert and not need extra uh, steps in the process, maybe you can test and see if, if, if that actually comes true. So that, that would be one way you can test into that. But again, the main point here is you want to have a balance of these audiences to drive those business outcomes for yourself. Now for catalog advertisers, so e-com advertisers who have a lot of products, and I'm not talking about like two or three or four or five, like you have 25, 50, 100, 200, in the hundreds, in the thousands, catalog advertising, catalog sales are going to be very crucial for the performance of your media dollars on, on Facebook and Instagram. So your DPA 14 day, that's dynamic product ads. So that's using your catalog feed. That's looking at anybody that's been to the website, engage with the product, added it to cart, and they're going to get retargeted with those products that they added to cart. That's going to be your highest intent audience. And then in the same sort of logic that we used before, if you had a content view, you looked at a product page, but you didn't add to cart, it's high intent, but not to the same level so on and so forth. Now, a mistake a lot of advertisers do on Facebook is that they run catalog sales, but they forget to run conversion campaigns alongside of that. Now, why would you do that? Catalog sales technically is optimizing for conversion. So what is the point of also running separately a conversion campaign? There is a purpose to that. And I'll explain. So typically, the catalog sales DPA retargeting objectives will allow you to do add to cart and people who have uh, looked at your product pages. But you could have other pages on your website that are not product pages that are valuable. And so technically the catalog sales objectives would not capture all those audiences. So someone that landed maybe on your home page, maybe somebody that went to a blog or just some other resource that's not a product page, that is what you want to use your conversion campaign for to be as a catch all. And I've actually seen positive results when we've run this next to catalog sales campaigns. So something you want to run in tandem. So in summary, structure is ultimately what allows us to get a sense, not a sense, but actual leverage around the way that these campaigns are delivering our media so that we can optimize for the highest intent audiences. And again, you might want to test using CBO versus ad set budget optimization to really see what gives you the ultimate result there. The next piece is that your business model you're using is going to really dictate the structure that you use. If you're a lead gen advertiser and your conversion happens offline, you might want to do some additional segmentation with your audiences. It might be by gender or it might be by some other details. Um, but that's something that you want to keep in mind. And then the last piece of it is that the better you can add, isolate these higher value actions, the more effective that you can be with creating structure for your retargeting campaigns. Hopefully this video has leveled up your knowledge and can help you be more effective in this new year with Facebook retargeting campaigns. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Peace.